there, good looking. Welcome. Are you suffering with low back pain right now? Possibly sciatica? Well, I developed a workout that is going to be easy on the back as well as hitting exercises and stretches and movement patterns that you need to be doing if you do suffer with low back pain or sciatica. Now you need some tools, so I want you to grab a pair of light and moderate dumbbells as well as a chair and a yoga tie. Now tip, if you don't own a yoga tie, an old necktie will do. So you know, a crappy one of your husband's you don't like, or a bathrobe tie, those work just as well. And if you are new to the channel, I would love to keep working with you, but you got to subscribe and you got to click the notification bell so I can get in your feed, baby. So click subscribe and let's do this as a team. All right, let's go warm up and let's get that low back feeling good. Hello there. Hey, welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s. Hey, listen, I've been a personal trainer for 25 years now. That's a long time. And I'm 50 years old myself. And that is why I started this channel. I wanted a space for us over 40 year olds that could get fit without killing ourselves. So today's workout is specific if you have low back pain or perhaps sciatica right now. Now with that said, I do not know your individual case. So if any of these exercises aggravate, irritate, you find discomfort in them, I want you to stop what you're doing, okay? Do not push through the pain, do not work through the pain. If something doesn't feel right, stop. Deal? Do I have your promise? Excellent. All right, let's get warmed up. And as we warm up, I'm gonna chat about the workout. Now let's start on the hands and knees for me. Knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. Okay, we call this a four point. Now on an inhale, allow the low back to sag. So we're getting some extension in the spine here. Do what feels good. Again, you don't want to experience pain. Exhale, push the ground away, tuck the tailbone under. Inhale, exhale. So we're flowing through this spinal range of motion, getting the spine warmed up, getting it what it really needs, especially if you do have experiencing sciatica right now, and that's on the arching part, the extension. Good. Again, though, there should be no pain. So this workout is a series of strength moves as well as movement specific for those of you that are encountering sciatica that's recommended to do on a regular basis. So I wanted a safe workout because I understand if you are experiencing back pain, you still want to work out, but how do you do that without further injuring yourself? So this workout could be the key for you. But again, it's not replacing what a physiotherapist or another um, health practitioner that you're seeing has advised you to do. Last two. And neutral spine for me. With that neutral spine, take an inhale, extend one arm and the opposite leg, level with your ground, and release on the exhale. Let's do the other side. Inhale, extend, thumb up. Exhale, release. Great job. Alternate side to side pattern. Warming up into the spine further with this. This is bothering your knees. If you have sensitive knees, double up your mat or push pause and go grab a cushion off the couch. Neck in line with the spine. Last two. Abdominals are bracing. One more. And release, big toes together, open up the knees for me, arms are ahead of you, I want you to sink the hips back, and then round the spine, come all the way up, drop the hips, and extend, so in a bit of a cobra, here we go, round the spine, take it back, now round, hips drop, head looks up slightly, push the hips back, so let's flow through this range of motion drill here for the hips, and again, spine, If you're having back pain right now, oh man, I feel, I feel for you. 
I have chronic low back pain as well. Mine is not sciatica. Mine is due to having one leg longer than the other. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so my SI joint gets locked up. And yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to know how to work through it without aggravating it. So I've managed to figure out a system for me. And I actually have my um, stretches that I do every night before bed up on here too. I'll put the link down below. Last two. And release, come into a standing position. Standing with the feet, shoulder width apart, drop the bum back, keep the spine neutral, push through the heels and drive up again. So when I sp say spine is neutral, that means the same spine you have standing is the same spine that you have when you uh, squat. So you'll notice I hinge forward a bit, but it's through the hip joint, so I don't lose any integrity in the spine. We've got 15 of these. Give me an extra booty squeeze when we come up, and then we will begin the workout. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Okay, so for our first exercise, I need you to find a space in your room right now where you can do a wall sit. So you need to be able to do a squat with the wall holding you up. So I'm going to readjust my camera so I can join you on this one. And we've got two rounds of wall sits we're going to be doing. Okay, first drill is a wall sit. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's essentially a squat, but our back is going to be supported by your wall. Bring your feet forward so that when we bend the knees, they stay lined up with the ankles. Drop down as low as you can go. Ideally, we want the thighs parallel to the floor. Now slide the chin in so the back of the head touches your wall. And if you're unable to, push, pause, get a pillow. And then pull the shoulders back so they're also pressing. So your shoulder blade tips are against the wall. Shoulders are against the wall. Back of the head is against the wall. Tailbone. Now pull your belly button in to brace into those abs and breathe. We have two rounds of these and then we'll move on. Wall sits are also a great way to train the legs if you have any knee problems too. So not only a great exercise right now for sciatica and back pain, but also for knee. Time. All right, shake it out. Don't go anywhere. We're here. I thought we might as well just do a couple of sets while we're here. Let's get the blood flowing through the legs again. Now again, if you're feeling pain or discomfort, Maybe don't go down as deep. If it's still aggravating you, then just give me some of the shallow, shallow squats. Easy for me to say that we did a warm up. Okay, ready? Slide down. Good. Now, slide the chin in. Beautiful. Open up the chest so the collarbone is open. Shoulders are pulled up against the wall. Good. Now, pull the belly button in towards the spine. We call that ab bracing. You're activating a deep muscle in the abdominal wall called the transverse, and that will help kind of lock that uh, pelvis and lock that spine for us. Almost there. You should be feeling the quads, and if you're like, what are the quads, PJ? Drop down a little lower. <laughs> You'll know them when you feel them. <laughs> Big muscles here, time, push yourself back up. Great job. All right, now we're taking ourselves down onto the ground with our moderate size of dumbbells, gonna work chest, and then superset that with a really nice ab exercise that's recommended for people with sciatica and low back pain. Okay, hopefully you've got yourself down on the ground. Let me demo what the chest press looks like. So this is an exercise to train the pec muscles, anterior deltoid triceps while having the back fully supported. Uh, normally in my normal workouts, we would do a bridge position on this too, but we're not gonna do it for this one. We'll do bridges later though, don't worry. All right, so the setup is elbows lined up with shoulders, wrists over elbows, and press the dumbbells up above the chest, touch them, and slowly lower. All right, so get yourself set up. Now with this too, we don't want that low back overarching, so I want you to pull that belly button in towards the spine a bit just like we did when we were doing the wall set. Now get those dumbbells set up. Good job, and here we go. We got 40 seconds of this, working into the chest muscles, like I said, shoulders, triceps. 
Hopefully your knees are bent as well. You saw what I was doing. Bent knee is always easier on the low back. When the timer goes, we'll put the dumbbells down and we'll stay in this position for that ab exercise I was telling you about. And we'll do what's called a supersetting. So we're going to superset upper body and abs with this round of movements. Time. All right, dumbbells down. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me a pelvic tilt, squeeze the bum up a bit, pull the belly button in towards the spine and hold for five, four, three, two, one, release. Beautiful. Let's do that again. Pelvic tilt, pull the belly button in towards the spine and hold for five, four, make sure you can breathe, three, two, one, good. Breathing's important, okay? <laughs> I like my participants breathing. Ready? <laughs> and hold for five, four, three, two, one, release. So we've got a little bit of movement in the pelvis with this, but the most important part of this movement is right there, drawing the belly button in and hold it and release. All right, grab your dumbbells. Second set of chest presses. And begin. So you could also do a push-up if that's feeling okay for you. I find most people, myself included, don't really have the best looking push-ups. So this is a better exercise if that's you. A lot of movements working the chest muscles actually won't aggravate the low back too much. It's believe it or not, when we train your back muscles that there are a lot of movements we can't do. And I'll talk to you about that when we get further down into the workout. Time, all right, dumbbells down. I'm gonna put mine to the side. Get set up, pelvic tilt, belly button in towards your spine, and hold for five, four, three, two, one, release. Again, little pelvic tilt, but more important, belly button being drawn towards your spine, arms down by your side, back of the neck is long, and release. Do it again, pull in, five, four, three, two, one, release, good. And again, five, four, three, two, one, release. One more, let's do one more. Five, four, three, two, one, release. All right, use your knee to help sort of rock yourself into a seated position and let's grab our chair. We're supersetting bicep curls here and then against the wall exercise. So your lighter dumbbells of the two that you had, you're going to situate yourself against a wall and I'm going to talk you through it because I really don't feel like setting up my camera again, but I want you to against a wall with your feet away from the wall. So it's just your bum, your back and the back of the head against the wall. Now bring your arms up, back of the hands, pressing against the wall as best you can. You might find that you have tight shoulders and you can't get the back of the knuckles against the wall. Do your best. Now from here, this is important, pull your belly button in towards your spine. Beautiful. Chin tuck, so back of the neck still against in contact with your wall. Now slide your arms straight up and down. Good. Straight up and down. We're working your middle traps here, mid-back muscles, really important for shoulder health. But as I was saying, a lot of dumbbell exercises to train our back muscles, we don't want to do if you have low back pain or sciatica. And you keep doing your wall set or your um, wall angels, and I'll tell you why. If you think about it, most common one we do is a one-arm row, and I have you hinged forward with load. That's the worst thing you can do with back pain. So this is a nice exercise, body weight, give me one more, with no stress to the spine. Now come on over and have a seat on your chair. 
dumbbells in hand, sitting nice and tall, feet planted, and let's do a bicep curl. Now, if you had tubing, you could definitely do a seated row with tubing or a lat pull down with tubing if it was anchored higher. Or if you have a TRX, you could do a TRX pull up. Now, if you want, we could stay seated in the chair for this second set of wall slides, wall angels, and you can let me know what you feel better. If you feel it against the wall or if you can feel it working in your back muscles and shoulders just as much seated. Time. All right. So if you're doing it seated with me, by all means, get back to the wall if you want. Slide your chin in. Bring the arms back. Good. Now pull the belly button in towards the spine. Remember, that's the important part. We're anchoring. Bring the arms straight up and down. The entire time pulling the shoulder blades together and as you're bringing the arms down, trying to bring the shoulder blades into your back pocket. See, I can feel my shoulders and my mid back muscles fire up big time just doing it seated. But I have to admit, if you can against the wall, it's gonna give you feedback that this doesn't. Abs engaged, great job. One more set of bicep curls coming up. Yeah, I really feel my shoulders. Time, excellent. All right, grab your dumbbells. Nice and tall on the spine, palms facing me, shoulders are rolled back and down and curl. When we do the bicep curl, fully extend the arm with each rep, going through that full range of motion. Feel those arms. And time. All right, dumbbells off to the side. We will need them in a couple more exercises, but right now we're going to work into the triceps as well as do a specific exercise for the um, sciatica. So I'm going to move my chair to my side here so that you can see what I'm doing. Well, we're, what happens with sciatica is we get a pinching in the discs, usually L4, L5, and from there it triggers the sciatic nerve, this pain going all the way down the leg. Usually you don't feel it through the knee, but then you feel it again through the calf. So on this movement that we're doing, it's called flossing. We're going to floss that sciatic nerve, and we'll do both legs, even if, or if you find that it's really quite nice on the leg that's irritated right now, and then stick with the same leg for two sets. First off is posture, nice and tall, so we're not allowing that lower back to round because that's what got our discs bulging in the first place. <laughs> Bad posture, so sit up nice and tall. Now lift the left leg up, flex that left foot, and as you extend the leg, I want you to look up and back. And now as the heel comes in, tuck the chin in. Good, let's try that again. Up and back. Slow and controlled. If this aggravates that leg, though, don't do it. On the second set, we'll do the other leg. So let's just stay with this one for 40 seconds, keeping that posture. Don't let that lower lumbar round as you kick. And now tuck the chin in. Kick. Look up. Try to look behind you. Now tuck in. Time. Before we do the other leg, slide your bum off. The closer your feet are to the chair, the easier this is. Tricep dip. Bend the elbows for me. Drop the hips down. Keep yourself close to the bench and drive up again. Now, if this bothers your wrists or shoulders, you can take that dumbbell that you had, bring it up, and do a behind-the-head tricep. All right. In every single one of my workouts, I always have different subs that you can sub in if a movement doesn't work. I get it, right? We're over 40. Not everything feels good 100% of the time. So instead of stopping, I'm going to give you options. And then you choose and we will get fit together. Woo! 
and low triceps. Time. All right, so let's do the other side flossing. So lift the leg up a bit. Get that posture. Again, super important. Now as you kick forward, I want you to look up. And now bring the heel in and tuck the chin in. Good. So this workout, once again, giving you a blend of strength exercises for general body strength mixed in with some low back sciatic time specific movements like that one. All right, tricep dips or behind the head extensions, whatever feels better for you. Ready? Keep the form and down. So with triceps, a really common exercise that you'll see in a lot of workouts are tricep kickbacks. So we're forward, we've got a dumbbell in each hand, we kick back. Great movement if you don't have back pain or sciatic, because look at this, right? I'm hinged forward. Even if I have perfect form, there is that opportunity for me to round, feeding into that herniated disc or that bulging disc. Uh-uh, let's not do it. <laughs> so we'll do these instead or behind the head. Time. All right, moving into back to our dumbbells, still seated. We're doing two movements. First one, take that right leg, cross it over the ankle, cross the ankle over the thigh, sit up nice and tall. So we call this a figure four stretch. Leading with the chest and neutral spine, come forward and press yourself back. So, the piriformis is what we're dynamically stretching right now because we're moving through this and it actually anchors the sciatic nerve and can get irritated with sciatica or can sometimes mimic sciatica. Sometimes you don't even have sciatica and it's just this muscle in your ass that is tight as hell. So this is one movement that we're going to help work that out. When the timer goes, we need our dumbbells to work into a general strength exercise after. I had a lot of fun developing this workout time. I had to really put my trainer's cap on for this guy. All right, sit up nice and tall now. Side lateral raises, modified one at a time. Otherwise, join me, both arms up to shoulder height only. Slowly lower. Now, palms are facing you for front lateral. One arm at a time to modify. Now, what are we doing with that posture? That's right, we are not rounding that low back because I'm gonna come through this TV screen and slap you. So sit up nice and tall, okay? Once again, posture on a day-to-day -day basis plays more of a role on your low back pain than your exercise program does. So think about that when you're out there, sitting in the car, even sitting watching TV, eating. How's your posture? Time. All right, let's take the left leg now, ankle over thigh. And if you've got to hold on to the shin, because you might be quite tight to keep that leg up there, go for it. Now we want to lift up, right? So we're seated nice and tall, and then come forward and say, hello, piriformis, and rock back. This is my tight side, holy cow. I was gardening all weekend, so you know how well my low back feels right now. I'm proud of myself though, I'm not much of a gardener. <laughs> In fact, I'm not a gardener at all. <laughs> but I did all right this season. <laughs> I did all right. Yay me. Whew, so we're just moving through this dynamically. We're gonna hold it passively in the stretch portion of this program, but right now dynamic. Time, all right, last round of your strength here. Dumbbells down by your side, sit up tall, thank you. And arms just to shoulder height, and now front. So now we're just training into the deltoid, your shoulder. But I am asking you to have good posture. We are using dumbbells, and you don't have any back support, so there's a high level of abdominals fired up right now too.
time. Excellent job. Okay, we're taking it down on the mat for the last portion of this workout. Now, I highly recommend you take your socks and shoes off because we're going to flow right into a stretch after that. So it might feel better with no socks and shoes on. So have your stretch tie close by as well. And you can share below whether or not you <laughs> raided your husband's closet and got rid of the ugly one that you hate him in. Every time he comes down with it, every Christmas, you're like, oh, why the hell are you wearing that tie? <laughs> Trust me, I know what you mean. So you don't have to take your socks off. You can keep your socks on if you want. Okay, bridges. I alluded to them earlier. They are such a great way to train into your glutes and your back is going to fire up as well. Arms down by your side. Heels close to the bum for me. Pull the belly button in a bit so we've got that deep abdominal activation. Now squeeze the glutes, lift the hips up till they're about level with your knees and then slowly lower down. Excellent. Let's do it again. We have 15 of these. Now if you're familiar with my workouts, you know that this bridge exercise is also my typical sub for people who don't like to do lunges or whose knees are too sensitive for lunges. If we're doing lunges, I'll quite often say, hit the ground, do bridges if this isn't working for you. We want this slow and controlled. Please breathe with the movement. Last four. Two more. Last one. And release. Pull the knees into the chest. We've got one more set of those, but let's just give the low back a bit of a stretch before we get into our second set. All right, drop them down, arms down by your side. Again, activation in the abdominals and squeeze the glutes, lift the hips up and slowly lower. Push through the heels. So there's actually very little weight in my toes when I do the bridge. Last four. Two more. And knees to chest. Rolling onto our sides, working into a outer hip muscle called your glute med, as well as that piriformis muscle I was telling you about that we were doing that dynamic stretch for. Roll onto your side, head rests on the bottom arm. Just have the knees neutral so they're not directly lined up with the knee, knee or hips, pardon me, nor are they pulled towards you. Keep the feet together. Now place that hand on that top hip. You want to remind that top hip not to roll back. From here, lift the knee up for what's called a clam. So keep that hip pointed down and release. Great job. Do it again. So sometimes I'll see people roll back to see if they can get a bigger clam. Not cool, actually, because you've kicked out the glute med, what we're trying to target. So be strict with your form. That's why I like the hand on top of the hip, kind of tactilely telling you, hey, keep form. <laughs> and you should feel the glute and the hip muscle pretty darn quickly. We have two sets of 15 and then we'll get to the other side. Last four. One more. 
and release. Bring that top knee in and just hold it here. You can maybe give the glute a good whack. <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's take it back. Feet together, hip pointed forward. So again, you might want to keep that hand up there and lift that knee. Feet stay together and one. Good. This is also a really good move, just like the bridges, if you have sensitive knees. This glute meets, responsible also for knee tracking. Woo, second set. Muscles starting to get a little warm, huh? <laughs> it's okay. We just have two sets. Last four. One more. Good job. All right, let's get to the other side. I'm losing my mic. Here we go. So again, lying on the bicep, I prefer that than this. Our neck's out of alignment when we have our head propped up there with our hand. Knees are slightly forward. Feet stay together. Now let's push that hip forward and keep it there. And lift that knee up. One. Good. Last one, and release. Bring the knee in. Just let that blood flow back into the hip before we get into that second set. All right, let's get the feet stacked. Get the form, hip pointed forward, and let's lift that knee up. Oh, it's always the second set. Yeah, the party round. <laughs> Three more. Last two. And one. Great job. On your backs for me. Feet firmly planted. Left ankle over right thigh. Now, if you have, if you found when we did the figure four on the chair that you are really tight, I want you to take your stretch tie or bathrobe tie or husband's ugly necktie and double it up and then put it behind that right leg to help yourself pull in. Otherwise, hands interlace behind that right knee. Now, guide that right knee so it's on the outside of the right shoulder and say hello to your left glute. Holding it here for a few breaths. Now, if this is too much, even um, allowing yourself with the tie, use the tie, just draw out the foot. Hold it there. Okay? Now, windshield wiper that right knee side to side. Flossing into that left hip joint a bit more. Good. And foot on the ground. Keep that left leg crossed still, but now take that right arm and pull it across. And you might even want to interlace the hands and try to pull the knee towards the opposite shoulder to get into the glute a bit more. So the first stretch, the figure four, gets deeper into the hip, the piriformis. Now this is kind of getting the superficial glute. And you might feel a little bit of the low back as well. Now before we get to the other leg though, I want you to take that stretch tie, 
place that left foot on the bottom of it. Now straighten your other leg for me. And using the right arm or the right hand, I want you to pull that left foot towards the right shoulder and then release it. Back foot either lined up with the hip or beyond. So you're pulling it on a diagonal. Leg is as straight as you're able to keep it. If you're like me with tight hamstring, that's a bit of a struggle. Last two. One more. Excellent. Now, hamstring stretched. Go back to that right leg. Bend it, plant it, and now press the heel up to your ceiling while you pull that leg in towards you using the yoga tie to help really get the leg lengthened. Back of the neck is long. There's no pain. If you feel pain, I want you to let it go. And that's actually really important to note when you're doing stretches. Quite often people will really go for it. Quite interesting. They won't really push themselves lifting weights, but oh my God, give them a stretch and they'll try to go to town. But if it's painful, the tissue, your muscles are very, very smart. And they're actually going to put a stretch reflex on and tighten up because they think that you're going to hurt it. And it's impossible to stretch a tightened, contracted muscle. So on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being your muscle is ripping, we want you about a 5, okay? And release. All right, let's do the series with the other leg. So start figure 4. And again, maybe this is where you're at or you've got the yoga tie, or you're able to interlace the hands behind the left thigh. Now left knee lines up with left shoulder, outside of left shoulder. Back of the neck is long. Couple more breaths. Now let's windshield wiper this left knee side to side. Just getting some movement into that right hip. A bit into the left as well. And foot on the ground. Left hand comes across. Maybe interlace the hands if that feels okay. And pull that right knee in towards the opposite shoulder, getting more into the glute. Two more breaths. Yoga tie in hand. Right foot. Extend the leg up. Straighten the other leg. Left arm's going to pull that leg across, making half of a letter X as we go forward and back. We have 10 of these. Trying to keep that leg as straight as you can. Press that leg up, back of the neck is long. Two more breaths. Try to release and relax the other muscles in the body. And roll on over. Now we're going on to the stomach, so into some spinal extension. If this bothers your low back, and it could very well bother your low back if you are experiencing sciatica right now, I want you to grab a couple of pillows and place them under the hips, okay? And that's going to prop up the pelvis and feel a lot better. Otherwise, you'll come right down. Now, right here may be exactly where you are because you don't want to feel pinching. You don't want to feel pain either, but pinching. Now, if you're feeling okay there, hands are down by your, or um, just in front of your shoulders, and you can press up in what I call mini cobra and release down. Now, pull the belly button in and squeeze the bum to help protect the low back a bit, and now try it. Good. So, no pinching in the spine. 
Shoulders are away from the ears. Once again, pull the belly button towards you, kind of like you're going into a really cold lake, right? And now you try to pull everything in. It's like, oh, it's so cold. That's what I want you to do now and tighten up the glutes, and that's going to help take some of the pressure off the spine. Two more. So these type of movements, extension, these are your friends when you have sciatica or back pain. All right, now you'll either stay here if this is what's comfortable for you, or if you are able to, you can come into a modified sphinx, shoulders back and down. But you want to make sure the hips drop down so you're not lifting the hips up like so, okay? Let them drop down. And release, big toes together, knees open, sit your bum back, do the opposing movement, flex the spine, forehead to the mat if you can. And come on up. We did it! Thank you so much for joining me. Now, hey, before you take off on me, a couple of things. First, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I can get more workouts and more tips and tools your way. Second, if you liked the video, I would love a thumbs up. And if you know somebody else who suffers from back pain, maybe share this video with her as well. And then finally, if you are new to the channel, I want you to head to my website. So everything's down there below in the links and go grab yourself the free three week fitness program. So when your back is feeling better, we need to get you built up so that you can train smart and not injure your back again. So please go grab that three week free training program. It's just waiting for you on my website. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope your back feels better. And until next workout, mwah, keep smiling. Thank you for coming.